Yeah, welcome back. The, the arguments have continued <laughs> backstage. Um, this is News File brought to you by the kindest sponsorship of Bank of Africa, as strong as a group and close as a partner, MT, and everywhere you go. Ashasi University, educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for Africa. Robert and Sons Optical Services, your comprehensive eye care service provider for 33 plus years. My Way Insurance, dial star 165 hash on MTN to join My Way today. Syntex Tanks is strong, it's tough. And Flamingo Paints, it's simply superior. And um, my guests for this next segment, the brightest, Bright Simmons, Honorary Vice President, Imani Africa. Sami Jemfi is still here. And Sylvester Tete, MP Botiano, English Amanfro, and Deputy Minister for Information. Uh, Sylvester, thanks for making time to join us. Thank you. Great. Uh, so I will shelve your messages for now, and then we will go to uh, Infraco, beginning with Bright Simmons. Bright, thank you so very much once again for making time to join us. Hello, Bright. Uh, you, unmute your mic. All right. So we will get uh, to establish proper contact with Brightsmans, and then uh, we will take the discussion on. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm reading things here, and I'm having a laugh. Uh, I'm having a laugh. So the way, the way I conduct this business, eh, you can keep predicting. My journalism, my style of journalism has never changed. Maybe you have changed. Call me NDC today. Call me MPP tomorrow. I'm what I am. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, let's try to see if we have you clearly. Hello, Bright. Hello, Samson. Can you hear me now? Great, great, great. Perfect, 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 perfect. So thank you for taking the time once again, um, doing the, the hard work in terms of making the research to help us to navigate the discussion about this Infraco, um, NextG Infraco uh, contract. What is wrong or bad about this deal? When I heard about it and heard about the minister, Esla Usu Ekufo, I felt there was some comfort in the fact that it was a consortium of about seven different partners. And they decided to bring all of them together in a special purpose vehicle to deliver this very essential 4 and 5G network across the country for us. What is wrong with it? Um, right. Okay. Okay. Indeed, Samson, I think some people hearing that there is opposition to this uh, will assume that the minister is right. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, go on. Right, we hear you. Can you hear me, Samson? Yes, please. Yes, I hear you. Hello, Samson. Go ahead. I hear okay. you. Okay, I was just saying that um, yes, there is the tendency to think that. Okay, very good. I was just saying, Samson, that there is a ten. Okay, can I proceed? Okay. Okay, so Bright will come back. We need Bright to set the tone for this discussion. Uh, please hold on. We'll be right back. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. Hello, Bright Simmons. Can you hear me, Samson? Go ahead. 
Apologies for that, but appears there is um, we have a bit of a technical problem. So what I was saying is that yes, I've also heard the minister say in recent times that she thinks this is you know pure perpetual pessimism. What I hope to do today is to try and explain very clearly to yourself and your listeners that you know we have very cogent policy reasons why we cannot support the arrangement that the minister is pursuing. Before I go into these five major challenges. Um, and we call them the five F's. Before I go into them in great detail, first give me a bit of time to explain the position of the minister and the policy and the background of the policy a little bit. So what the government is saying is that if you read carefully all the, the things they've said in the past and, and more recently, that we have a monopoly in the industry um, and you know there's no point being coy about it, that MTN is that monopoly. And because of this monopoly, it makes it impossible for other players to invest and to uh, make profit. And that has created conditions in which uh, MTN is effectively abusing this monopoly. That has also then led to uh, higher prices, lower innovation, and poor quality. Given that context, we, know we have a number of like key issues that from the minister's point of view and the ministry's point of view has to be addressed by this consortium. And so we can you know, list out the key issues about prices, customer service, innovation, lower service quality, and some will even say national security risks. What is surprising, though, is that when the ministry and the, and the government communicates externally, they often don't say these things. They say that we are doing very well on the ICT front. So they tout international rankings, like the Victor Competitiveness Survey, that says that Ghana tops in West Africa. They tout um, various ITU and GSMA uh, rankings, that suggests that you know smartphone penetration is very high in Ghana, and they thought all of these international rate is to suggest that Ghana is doing very well. Let me give you an example about pricing, for instance. There is an organization called Cable. It's a price comparisons network globally, and it does comparison of pricing. Um, and you will see, for instance, that in their 2023 rating, Ghana was third in Africa in terms of countries that have the lowest prices for mobile data or in mobile internet. Um, and it was 33 in, in, in the world. It, was, it ran higher than the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, and the rest. So while, you know, those of us that typically say we have to be very careful how we use these international reaches and rankings to override the sentiment of those on the ground, though, while that is, ten, you know, usually our approach, the ministry has been very um, excited in using these statistics to bolster the claim that we are doing very well on the ICT front and on the telecom front. They also cite growing consumption, so, for instance, uh, mobile data usage per person in Ghana has risen from about 15,000 megabytes, that's about 15 gig, um, in the third quarter of 2022 to about 21 uh, mega, uh, gigabytes uh, in, the, in the third quarter of 2023. So, over a one year period, we've seen a growth that is more than 30%. And we see similarly, even for those telecom operators that are not doing too well. So, the point I'm making is that usually the ministry uses these types of statistics when it's comparing Ghana to other African countries to say that we are doing very well. And then when it has policy, you know, like what it has right now, that requires it to use force and, and power to run through, then it argues that things are really bad in the telecom sector. So we, our view is that, you know, we have to be very balanced in the way that we, we evaluate things. We do not deny that there are industry-level challenges. Whether by international ratings and indices that show that maybe consumers in Ghana are better off than other countries, those indices and reports do not undermine the fact that in Ghana, a lot of people complain about the service they receive. And at the industry level, we do have challenges. We have a situation where actually mobile data penetration has been falling, albeit slowly, from about 77% in the third quarter of 2022 to just above 70% in the third quarter of 2023. This is NCA data. That may be, well, it may well uh, be due to the, the current economic crisis that we are facing. But the fact of the matter is that there is a decline. We also don't deny that MTN is really dominant in the sector. In the mobile data segment, for instance, the mobile internet uh, space, MTN is almost 80% of penetration. So it is indeed dominant. We don't also deny that a lot of companies have come in trying to do business in the mobile broadband space to deliver internet to our homes. These were specialized companies. You know of them, Surfline, uh, Blue Telecom, uh, Broadband Home, uh, busy internet, and all of them have collapsed. The only one that is still, you know, uh, theoretically still playing is Telesol, 
But if you look at you know the numbers that they've been reporting, it's very significant. So we've seen just in a one year period from the late 2022 to late 2023, the amount of bandwidth that goes through these companies collapsed from about 6.5 thousand gigabytes or thereabouts uh, to nothing. So it's a very significant challenge that we face that all these companies are simply going broke. What could be the problem? And the government, of course, says that the reason why we are seeing uh, massive um, challenges in, in subscri subscription, both in the mobile and the fixed data space. And very, we have to be very careful that we distinguish between the two. So there is the internet and the, the voice calls you're able to make on your phone, which we call mobile or cellular. And then there is the phone calls and things you can make from a landline or the internet that could come to your home through a cable or a fiber. They are not the same kind of technology and sometimes we separate them to analyze. So I've just shown you the data for mobile internet. On the screen now, you see the data for uh, fixed broadband and uh, fixed voice telecommunications. And also, so we, we see that both in fixed broadband and in the mobile telecom segment, we've had some challenges with, with uh, uh, subscription uh, of late. There is also the proof though, mm -hmm. that often when we say that MTN is a monopoly, we, and we focus therefore on the cellular space, we don't consider the fact that Vodafone now Telecel is also a monopoly in the fixed space. So essentially, when you look at the fixed, your landline services at Joy FM, when you look at the internet that comes into Joy FM, right now for broadband wireless and for fixed voice uh, telephone in Ghana, Vodafone's domination is higher than even MTN's domination in mobile and cellular. The reason why we don't complain about it is that Vodafone has been striving to make money, notwithstanding its monopoly. So it tells you that monopoly is not always the only reason why a company may be doing very well or a company may be making profits, whereas everybody else is failing. So that's an important point for us to bear in mind, that we have other monopolies in the, in the telecom sector that are not necessarily doing so well uh, because of other factors. And maybe those factors should be looked into more closely than assume that it's all about monopoly. Other background issue that I also thought was important because it's come up several times is the ministry's claim that we have only 15% 4G penetration. That data is simply not true because you know the NCA, which is its own specialized regulatory agency, tells us that the penetration rate for 4G is almost 30%. And this is as far back as January 2023. So if we use the usual trends in mobile internet um, that we've seen, I showed you earlier on in the, in the previous graph, we may well be around 40% uh, access to 4G tele telecommunication. Mm -hmm. But that is purely on account of the handsets, right? So your handset has to be enabled for you to receive the 4G. If you buy a handset that has no capability to receive 4G, you won't get 4G. So if you ask MTN, they will say that they already have 99.3% of all their cell size able to deliver 4G. It's just that they don't have enough customers, uh, or rather they, are, they don't have all their customers with their handsets that can benefit from that 4G. The ministry may decide not to accept that fact, but nobody has controverted it at the NCA level. We may have to take it for the truth. But let's say, despite all that I've said to you, the fact that the monopoly is not only on the MTN side in the mobile and the cellular space, but also we have some monopoly in the fixed space, the fact that 4G is already gone, um, uh, penetrated all the cell sites, despite what the ministry claims, the fact that what the ministry claims about 15% penetration is not true, let's forget all about them and just assume that what has been said uh, is correct. And that is that the MTN monopoly is the source of all the problems that we are facing. Then the question then arises, which is exactly the question that you asked me, is the proposed solution truly viable? And I think that is where we should focus our, 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 our energy. So <laughs> accepting that, you know, MTN is this monster that is trampling the nation, et cetera, et cetera, does not stop us from then beginning to scrutinize the actual solution that the minister has proposed. The minister doesn't explain how by getting a new company to own the towers that provide 5G, and maybe the, the fiber optic that connects those towers together, and the cell sites, et cetera, the, the micro cell site that you need to use for, for 5G to work, getting a company to put all that in, or take over one of the existing networks and upgrade it, whatever method that they use. They do not explain clearly how that will lead to MTN becoming less powerful. Because MTN already has the subscribers. And if you say this entity will sell the 5G, to anyone that buys on, on a fair basis, then why wouldn't MTN simply buy those services and continue to provide the services to its existing 4G customers? That is not clear, but there are bigger problems. And these are the five main problems that I warned you about. 
The first problem is that the minister claimed they are big international companies, Tech Mahindra, Nokia, Microsoft, uh, Radisys, which is the company that is affiliated with Geo Reliance, mm. one of the world's largest 5G operators in India. And he's mentioned these companies as part of a consortium. Normally, if you say a consortium, like you've rightly pointed out, Samsung, you mean that there is a special purpose vehicle in which all the companies have an interest. And that's why you're saying it's a consortium. But when we actually look at the creation details of this entity called NetGen Fractal, which is represented as a consortium, we don't see a consortium. These are the current uh, owners of, of, of uh, NetGen Fractal, the shareholders. Integrated Legal Consultants is a law firm in Ghana that is run by someone uh, called Olusula Ogundimo. And then we have KNET, but KNET has only 5%, bear that in mind. And then we have Ascend Digital, about which we have a lot to say. Critically, Ascend Digital and Integrated Legal Consultants own almost 95% of the company. But even more fascinatingly, they file for only one beneficial owner, and that beneficial owner is Olusula Ogundimo. So by law, and you are the lawyer, if the beneficial owner of the company is Olusula Ogundemu, who is uh, a private legal practitioner and runs a law firm called Integrated Legal Consultants, we cannot in good faith say that we have a consortium represented by a special purpose vehicle that has seven international companies uh, as members. That is not possible. Mm. We also know that, yes, Kate Net is a very respected, long-standing company in this country. It's been running this stuff for years. Even though it's not a major telco infrastructure provider, it does have some sites in Liberia, in Ghana, where it does provide rural, some rural telecommunication service and the like of it. But the truth is that K, uh, KNET is also saddled in similar issues around monopoly, imposed monopoly by the ministry. You're probably aware that the private broadcasters, of which Joy is a member, I presume, have sued the government because they are trying to force everyone to pay KNET for access to the national digital terrestrial television platform. That's right. And it's the same issue that we are facing, that the government has imposed a monopoly from nowhere for claims that this particular monopoly is providing contribution link services and things like that. So my view is that KNET is now, even though it has its own historical pedigree, is beginning to look as if it's part of this clique of Ascend Digital and others, which we will explain in the moment, typically represented by integrated legal consultants. What do we mean? We mean that... Uh, since this particular minister took the helms of affairs uh, in, uh, of our telecommunications matters in this country, we see a number of companies regularly getting contracts from the government. Ascend Digital is one of them. It has an entity called Smart Infraco. It's the company that the World Bank did transform money to connect post offices, clinics, etc., etc., was given to without approval from the PPA. It did a single sourcing without authorization, went back to the PPA to get ratification. In the Kelmi GVG case, in during that tender, it was this integrated legal consultant that I'm mentioning that sent the representatives to represent all the key tenders. So essentially, you have a tender and you have competing tenders. And yet still, the representative of those tenders came from a law firm called Integrated Legal Consultants. And that same company, that's in the case of the Kelmi matter, that same company, it's also represented in Ascent Digital Matters. This Angela Onwuka woman who owns Smart Infraco and is the beneficial owner uh, and so on, also one of the beneficial owners of Ascend Digital, came through the recommendation of uh, this Ascend Digital company. We've seen that the chairperson of the next gen in Fraco, uh, a lady called Amina Miner, who is the who is a chief operating officer of a Lagos-based oil company called MRS. That person was recommended by Integrated Legal Consultants. You see what I mean? So hmm. it's the same network of people getting big contracts, including the common platform through which all data um, in the telecom sector is monitored. So when we say, therefore, that KNET has joined that clique, we mean that it's also beginning to get these contracts where often there is no procurement process. And you saw that in the IBA, the independent broadcaster suite, that is what they are alleging. There was no problem procurement. Somehow a company just gets something that it effectively is a monopoly. In short, the company is creating a new monopoly, that's MTN, because it creates MTN as a monopoly. Second issue is that there is no clarity as to where the money will come from to build five, the, the 5G network. And 5G is very expensive. Whether you are going the Bramfield way of upgrading existing 4G networks and you have to literally use the 4G network, or you are building a standalone 4G, uh, 5G network where you are going to build new towers all over the country, it's a billion dollar affair. 
Mm. Now, the point we have made is that when this company was asked, Nedgen and Franco, to pay $125 million, they said they couldn't pay. It has to be broken down into tranches for them to pay every year. So for something that I don't think we've ever done for any company, I don't have evidence that any other company to pay for access to our spectrum, which is in this case, what allows you to run the, the, the telecom service, uh, the, in this case, 5G network. Every time every company has got alliances in Ghana in the telecom sector, it pays a fund. In this company's case, we've broken it down into 10 tranches of almost 10 years because it doesn't have the money. Hmm. If a company doesn't have this financial backing and we've seen their dossier that is sent to the NCA to approve this, they have no full management uh, uh, complement, they have no evidence financial uh, backing. There are a lot of things we could say about this on air. I don't have the time, I won't say it. But the key principle is that they don't have the money, a billion dollar rollout. And we know that because in other places where telcos with much bigger health, Ireland, uh, Bangladesh, look at the number of subscribers in Bangladesh and companies like Ruby and Tinder Mandia, yeah, they have struggled to roll out 5G due to the cost. 5G sometimes require almost 10 times more antenna and uh, base station facilities, including the so-called micro size, than you need for 4G. Some, in some instances, sometimes it requires more power, depending on how you roll it. Mm. And you definitely need fiber to connect to the different cell sites, which is really expensive and takes a lot of time, including all the right of way to get the fiber to connect the different cell sites. So for all those reasons, you need huge, huge, huge amounts of money. And with mm. people struggling around the world to finance this, it makes it very difficult to suggest that a company with no financial track record, with no clear management, with only a skeleton staff to do this. The third issue we have is that, uh, you know, now that they've been given an exclusive license, they are the only ones who will be allowed to do 5G in this country for the next 10 years. Remember that MTN was trying to get a license. It was not given to it since 2021. So you stopped the pilots, even though they had already spent money to upgrade some of its cell sites. We know that there are companies like Huawei who have done deals with Bui Power using ULTE. And in, in other countries, they've upgraded that ULTE, which is a 4G technology, to 5G. For smart minds and things like that so that was the direction that Huawei was going in this country we know there are other companies deploying fiber that they think would then support some of the MIMO sites to create new MIMO sites and use that to deploy 5g all those investments are now started because what the government is saying is that they don't allow anybody else to upgrade their network to deliver 5g in this country for 10 years because of a company that has very limited pedigree and 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 track record mm. The uh, part of the matter is also that this claim that we need a company to manage the infrastructure, that is not a telco, that presupposes that we don't have such companies in the country already. We do. We have companies like Helios Towers and American Towers Corporation that manages this infrastructure. They will provide uh, wholesale. They don't sell to consumers. So if you really wanted to upgrade that model so that companies like Helios and ATC and the rest will now have laws that require fair access reasonable pricing and all the things that you want the next gen infra entity to do you could simply have gone ahead and said it that you know you those companies that are operating towers and things like that we don't want the telcos controlling you through crony contracts anymore what we want now is that there's going to be a national framework any company that wants access to those towers and the like those company that company will on the base of a national framework have the base uh, the, the the right to access the, the network without discrimination. We didn't do any of that for money. However, it has an exclusive license that it can use to more or less extort and strong arm other operators to sing his tune. Mm. And the danger with it is that it's the same group that controls Air 30 Group, that controls the common platform, and controls other national telecom assets. So we are, con we are working very carefully and diabolically to construct a new monopoly that controls multiple telecom assets. That for us is very dangerous. Our last critical issue is that that would then lead to a situation where you fragment the sector further because you have MTN that and some of the other bigger telecom companies like Telecom and the rest that already have infrastructure in place and contracts, long-term contracts with Helios and others. It's not easy to get out of those contracts to go and rent new towers from some new company. So you have, this, you have a situation where the company with the biggest... Um, private base doesn't get on board this network potentially where would the money then come from because this their subscribers money that will go to feed this company to enable this company to continue the rollout nationwide our argument is that when you take all of that into account you come to the conclusion that this will lead to 
worst outcome for consumers. Where do we have examples of similar things that have tried this model? And the GSA may have documented the outcome very carefully. Kenya, Russia, Rwanda, Mexico, South Africa, all of them are abandoning it midstream because it's too complicated, very difficult. Uh, the companies have existing contracts. Uh, they have their own infrastructure in some cases. It's just so hard to impose that all of them are banned apart from Rwanda. Rwanda went all the way through from 2017. Then 2022, Rwanda backed out because it didn't make sense. And after Rwanda backed out, things are moving on well. Nothing has uh, changed. They just improved their governance of the existing uh, competition laws and the competition framework to make sure that no company can abuse any standing they have. Because, for instance, if you have... Uh, South powers more than everyone else. In, in the Philippines, for instance, the national open access policy require you to rent it out if some other company wants right. to use it because of co-location rules. So there's no real reason why we can't use similar things like that. There are a lot of frameworks around the world where countries use national open access framework which are low cost and do not build the whole new company to do it. And the countries that have tried, like Rwanda, have backed up. Those are the five reasons which we see the five Fs. Why we are reaching the government's 5G policy with F, 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 F. Um, it's on account of these main five reasons. Happy to answer your questions, Samson. Thank you very much. Uh, right. I would want you to uh, stay with us in the next... Uh, 20 minutes or so, uh, listening to my guests in the studio, and then you may have a few things to respond to. And that was a presentation by Brad Simmons on what is wrong with this particular contract. Now, Sami, um, the minority in parliament have raised a number of issues. Um, the minister, as she told us, that they are going to roll out this five right, after, after listening to Bright raise all these issues, you would have allowed the oh, no, 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 of government no. to respond. So you raise your further issues, then he will <laughs> respond to them. <laughs> all right. <laughs> this, uh, to launch these 5G services across mm -hmm. the country within six months. Yeah. And they are aiming to expand into Africa. Mm -hmm. From what Bright tells us, this is not something you can do in six months. And even the opacity of the processes... Mm -hmm. And the what he calls the he called it something trampling. The image he gave was mm -hmm. really interesting. You have the well, elephant well. and you have a um, MTN banner on yeah. it and so on. So, what is the minority saying is the biggest problem apart from the fact that it ought to go through parliamentary approval and it has yeah. not. Yeah, uh, something. Thank you very much. Um, for those watching, uh, this is a very important subject because this is about you. Once this 5G infrastructure is undertaken and uh, developed and the MNOs are able to utilize it, what it will mean is that we will be having 5G on our phones and on all the electrical gadgets we use that requires internet. And so for every data you buy, for every call you make, the money you are going to pay the people the money will be going to. That is what we are discussing. That is what the topic is about. This entity called Next Gen Infraco is going to have 62.5% of that money you are going to pay for data. You are going to pay for the cost you make, at least the wholesale price of that, which your telco will be transferring to you with their added cost and margins. So this is about you. Now, the opacity point is important, and I want to just say something about it. You see, over the years, what we have done is that when we want to um, develop our spectrum, it was so with 4G. What do we do? We auction it. Transparent, competitive. OK, so highest bidder buys it. Now, the rationale is that, or the concern is that MTN is so strong that has become a monopoly, and once you auction, it is always going to be MTN and MTN alone which can buy. So now government says, we are not going to auction again. We now want a consortium of several private players in the industry. Seven of them. Seven of them to come together and then own a significant portion of this. But the point is that if that is what you want to do, 
Okay? I will not even fault the rationale. But that is what you want to do. And you have nothing to hide. Do it with a sense of transparency. Put out a request for proposals, an RFP. Allow for companies who think they have the wherewithal to bid. We did it in the case of PDS, when we're looking for a consortium to run ECG. Even though when they, take off over, when they took over, they ended up giving it to Cronis. But if you look at the procurement process we started, Miracle and all that, international local companies took advantage and said, we want to be part of the consortium. That is what you do when you have good motives and nothing to hide. In this case, nothing of that nature was done. In the dark and with the speed of lights, certain entities have been put together and given almost 95% of this 5G. No tender, no request for proposal, no transparent. We are told they are the experts within the industry. The only experts? Hmm. How? They, they, and they say, well, we did that because we don't want MTN uh, to, to have a monopoly. But if that is what you want to do, in the RFP, you can state that MNOs are disallowed so that the mobile network operators like M M MTN will not even participate in the bid. Because there are many other companies who can do that. You've given them no opportunity. Number two is the illegality. So, so you want to stop monopoly, but you're creating a monopoly. Another monopoly. And okay. you're creating it in the dark. The second point is that if you want to give out 5G, no problem. This is a purely procurement matter. Government engaging other third parties in a contract. That contract is governed by law. One of those laws is the Public Financial Management Act. Right. Section 33 is clear that if the government, if a covered entity, and the National Communications Authority, NC, is a covered entity, and that law says that if a covered entity in this case, the NCA is engaging in any contract for more than one year. The loss is multi-year contract, which has a financial commitment on government. It must go to parliament for approval. I've heard some say that, oh, there is no financial commitment on government on this. I said, really? The government has 7% stake. How is government going to fund that 7% stake? So there is a clear financial commitment because government, as a shareholder, must inject equity. Why won't you take it to parliament if you have nothing to hide? That you incorporate this special purpose vehicle, within one week, executive approval is given by the president to Upe Munangaza, gives executive approval. One week of the formation of the, com the, com the company. Yes. But because it's an SPV. We know that. A, 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 we know, we know that. So they will obviously not have experience. We know that. But if they apply for a license for this, inclusive of the day the letter was sent to NCA, and inclusive of the day the reply was sent to them. So two days. Look at the, 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 the alacrity, the speed. This is something that other players have sought to explore. The government has said, no way, keep your money. The government is in there. So it's very easy to get what you want. So, as far as so, so why won't you so. open it up? Why is it that there was no request for proposals? No tender? Why is it that other interested entities were not allowed to compete for this thing? Why is it that it has not been sent to parliament when the law is clear? And you read, you read it, this is worse than SML. If you read the SML, the KPMG report on SML, it's clear, multi-year contracts mm -hmm. must go to... Uh, I'm uh, surprised uh, to hear Afenio Makin suggest that there's no need for parliamentary approval. He went to quote yeah. Article 181. I don't know why. He doesn't understand it. It's not, it's not subject to Article 181. It's subject to the... It's section 33. And, and then, uh, senior, number three, that's my last but one point. Lack of value for money. You want to sell 5G. Then they decide that they will sell it, that the, the right for it to be, the spectrum to be developed. They will sell it for $125 million. Mm -hmm. How did they de come by that figure, $125 million? What went into it? Nigeria has sold just one block of its 5G for $257 million. Yes, Nigeria is a bigger market. Mm -hmm. You can't compare that to Ghana. So that's the but, question. But, but how did you come to the 400 to 500 million oh, uh, dollars? Oh, that I'm saying that you okay, say so, it's so, so now, 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 oh, hold on. Nigeria sold one, two blocks, each one, each at 257 million dollars. They have four blocks that they want to sell. We have sold, given basically total monopoly everything to this next gen infraco people for 125. They don't tell you how they arrive at the 125. They don't allow for bidding so that you can get a competitive price. And they say that that is good. And they give this company a sweetheart deal where they will have 10 years to do work and pay. Like you give, you buy your car or a and give it to somebody to do work and pay. 
which company in this country has been given spectrum license and has been allowed to do work and pay? Work and pay. Some say you and I can do work and pay for this 5G, you know. Because if we go to any bank that the government has given us contracts, supported by executive approval from the president, give us a loan to do 5G, mm. and ten, within 10 years we'll do work and pay, we will get. Anybody can do it. Why do you do this? No value for money. Then right. some say, lastly, is the questionable reputation of the entities behind us. Because we are talking about the lead company in this consortium is the company called Ascend Digital. Do you recall the COVID-19 tracker app? Do you recall that Oslo Usu at Herverton told parliament and by extension the whole country that that app was done by some benevolent Guineans at no cost whatsoever to the states? That's right. Do you know that Ascend Digital was a company behind that app? And do you know that the Commonwealth Foundation in their documentations on the funds they gave us to bat, uh, 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 battle the COVID-19 pandemic, are emphatic that over $1 million was spent on this app, which offered no use or value to the people of this country. We spent $1 million on it. That affects their expertise? That, that, that calls into question their credibility. Okay. And, and aside you. that, you, the same people behind that Ascend, uh, Ascend Degeta mm -hmm. are the same people behind the infamous Kelly GVG deal. Okay. And Bryce Simmons has spoken, you know, at length about right. the yes. same thing. Yes, so uh, Sylvester, this thing is you, bad for me. It is to, state capture. How do you I mean, answer answer all of these state capture. Stories, well, And by people, people look at the, the company setup. And now there's even a question as to whether, in fact, there's a consortium. That you go and look at the incorporation documentations, and they're Usula. suggesting that you don't have any seven entities coming together as yes. you are claiming, Usula. and so on. Uh, we are being compared to Nigeria. I sometimes I want to be sure about what the comparison really is. Out of the 36 states, you are just like Lagos. So yeah. the comparison sometimes that's not one work. block. Yeah, one block. Well, the, the, the uh, something. I think that this particular discussion should warrant some more time to deal with this matter, mm. the kind of distortion, misinformation, disinformation being put out there is quite scary. Let's see what you do in the next 10 minutes. Yes, and if you are not careful, I doubt if we could exhaust all these matters. Try and exhaust them, I'll, I'll, to the I'll, I'll, do, I'll do my best, but I'll keep talking until we get this whole thing. I wonder who these uh, people opposing deal are speaking for. If indeed they are speaking for the good people of this country, then indeed they should be applauding the president. And for that matter, uh, Minister for Communication and Digitalization for uh, the bold decision to have given us an even playing field to ensure uh, 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 digital inclusion and bridging the rural urban gap in this country. And I think that's what we should be looking at. Something just three weeks ago or a month ago where World Bank, uh, Bank of Ghana organized a 3 I conference here in Accra. Industry players are aware, including MTN and Telesel and all the telcos have been calling for a uh, uh, shared neutral shared platform for enhancement of digital inclusion in this country. And I believe that the call is loud. So in this case, government not going for public auction of the 5G spectrum is in line with the core of the MNOs themselves and the best practice in the world where the world is looking at the cost efficiency uh, 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 of data and then voice calls all over. Let me come to the cost of the uh, 5G spectrum. The assessment is done by NCA. And you can ask NCA how they arrived by $125 million, as it were. This is uh, oh, we should not done. Be them. Please, I'm coming. Should be transparent. I mean, it, it, yes, they've done it. They did industry, they used industry. Re remember remember the, the issue of time. Yes. Be focused. They, they, they did so. Be focused. By Don't using, be distracted. By using industry parameters to arrive at that price okay. or amount of money. The NDC press conference, let me spend time to uh, deal with it. Uh, something, indeed, it is not to say that uh, using of our. Uh, uh, Public auction is not a route to use. Of course, it's a route to use, but you could also use the same route by government to arrive at a better conclusion. So there's nothing wrong with that. We have had experience of the auction of the 4G in time past. What happened to the 4G uh, uh, auction? After nine years, and indeed I challenge uh, uh, Bright Simmons to say that we've had 40% uh, national penetration of the 4G spectrum since 2015. It is not true. This same data he's talking about is provided by the NCA, and the available data shows that we've done only 15% after nine solid years of auction of the 
or of the of the uh, 4G spectrum. Mm. So in this case, government is saying that if you auction the 5G, it is motivated. When the highest bidder buys it, it is motivated by returns on investment. But there is no highest bidder. Please, here. Mm. please, I'm telling. If the creative word here is if, if you auction the 5G and the highest bidder buys it, largely motivated by profit. So the person can decide to stay in Accra Tema and Kumasi. Our overall digitalization agenda is to have this whole country hooked up on 4 5G spectrum to ensure data efficiency, lower cost rate, and uh, 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 enhancing of businesses in this country. So that is why government is saying that. The rollout in September to December, based on the existing infrastructure and the partners in this uh, 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 particular SPV, what we are going to do, we're going to have about 50% penetration within the first six months. Mm. By 2030, this really? whole country, yes, this whole country <laughs> will be having about 19, uh, uh, eight or 200% uh, 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 connectivity or penetration in this country. You've sold the 4G for nine years. You've had 15% penetration. Aren't you worried? If you are going to go through the same route as it were, then there's going to be a problem. How many years is it going to take you to have national connect, uh, 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 penetration as it were. So that is one of the things that is motivated. And the call by the MNOs themselves that we should have a neutral digital platform for enhancement of business. Let me come to the consortium as it were. Mm. On 27th of May, the agreement was reached in India by these giant tech companies we are talking about. And I'm happy that all the companies we listed, about seven of them, they've all signed an MOU. You've been registered today at the Register of Companies. So for me, I think that it's being registered. Yes. Okay. The lead consult, the lead company in this, mm -hmm. they've shared all this information with the uh, regulator. Don't forget this whole thing we are talking about. The regulator is NCA. Who is the lead company? Government of Ghana is part. Government of Ghana is, is part of the consortium. Mm -hmm. Please, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. The government of Ghana is part of the consortium. Ascend Digital, Knet. I'm surprised today they are running down KNET about the capacity of KNET and Ascent Digital. We will come to that as we go along. So, again, from Parliament and the position of the minority on uh, 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 legal issues they've raised, something, without you, if both are lawyers, the operative word in the provision of uh, Public Financial Management Act, PFM Act, Section 33, 1 and 2, is that there must be a financial commitment and contingent liability. Not end. Mm. So, uh, okay, so, they are, so it so, might be two so, separate. Uh, so on the screen, yes, is, you can it's, put, it's a search yes. on, the, on the entity and the results from the Registrar General mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm Department. Yeah. And it does you know, show somewhat that you know, the seven entities or so that are thrown into the public loosely as partners not there. Including some international Sam entities. Sam 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 uh, Sam you can I'm find coming. them. Go ahead. I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming. I've told you about 27th uh, 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 May, mm. where this is a public knowledge. Okay. These companies and the lead consortium have signed an agreement, memorandum of understanding. And that memorandum of understanding should be registered with the registrar of companies. Okay. Where were these procured? It should go ahead. So we are not done yet. It's a process. And the regulator is keenly following this conversation. So I've given you a lead. So on the 27th of May, mm. the consortium had signed a memorandum of understanding for the shareholder agreement with all these big companies we are talking about. Okay. And okay. it will be registered with the Registrar of Companies. Okay. So people should relax. So right. Please, please. No, please. Don't, don't, don't intervene. Please. Yeah. I, I, I beg you. Yeah. I beg you. So back to... You have barely three minutes. Yes, go ahead. Back to... Sorry, then you, you back close to, at 12. Back to Section 33 <laughs> of the Public Financial Agreement. It Malaysia. talked about financial commitment and contingency liability on the part of government. In this case, government of Ghana, there's no financial commitment as it were. Hey. I'm telling you, take it from me, there's no financial commitment on the part of Ghana for multi-year investment. So there's nothing like that. There's no contingent liability. The contingent liability is on the consortium. And these are facts. That's why it shouldn't go to That's parliament. why it shouldn't ah. go. That's why it doesn't require parliamentary approval. Mm. So that should be clear. There's no financial commitment on the part of government. In that case, government there is, is an annual uh, uh, revenue uh, 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 commitment on the part of consortium to government of Ghana. So it's a revenue that government of Ghana rather is than financial commitment. Is a shareholder please, which is please, please, please. That is why I'm Every telling you. Every shareholder has a financial commitment please. to the company government, that it is a shareholder of. Government of Ghana of. is this not basic. paying for the 7.5% 
share in it. W where is it? Please, it is part of the agreement. Where is that agreement? The government agreement? of Ghana does not owe a commitment to pay that. And I'm telling you, it's I'm giving, equity. It's equity. So government ah, of Ghana, true. Carriage. Please, it's a free carriage. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a free carriage. So it's, so it's a free yeah. carriage. It is depending not, on how the argument goes. Please, please giving explanation. Let's, let's giving, listen no, to you are, your interjections are yeah. not helpful. Go ahead, go I'm ahead. telling you, and you can check this. Government of Ghana's interest is a free carriage. There's no financial commitment on the part of government that should warrant mm. parliamentary approval. Mm. So that is settled. Okay. And that is settled. Let's go to the Nigerian argument. Okay. That Nigeria has, uh, has sold one of its blocks for $250 million. And for that reason, the minority is saying that we could have sold our 4G for $500 million or 400 to $500 million. That's laughable. Look, in Nigeria, in Nigeria, they have over 150 to 170 million uh, uh, mobile subscribers in Nigeria. In Ghana, MTN is the biggest shareholder of our market with about uh, 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 18 million uh, subscribers. Compare that. MTN itself holds about 100 million subscribers in Nigeria. So when you are putting the two markets together, it's a mismatch. To begin with, what we are doing is to attract such international giants mm. to develop our 5G to the extent that we can launch on what it. What international giants? Asen Degetal is an international giant. You're talking of tech the, What are you talking about? Radices. Please, please. The suggestion that, the suggestion that uh, you, could have, you could have opened up. No, have. when you, please. You could have, you could what have opened talking up. talking about Radices, Joe? Uh, what, what, what you could have opened up and so, uh, and so. So what I've said, your, you didn't hear your, that. I've told you, you are part of the agreement there. Please, please. The lead company of the consortium. Who is the lead company of the consortium? It's Asen Degetal. And Asen Degetal is not an internationally reputable. I believe that I've listened to you. Oh, my brother. And she also listened to me for the conversation. Oh, by the time I said you don't determine you gave me like, hold on, hold on. You shouldn't so you also determine. Determine. You did like you didn't two hold people. And is that eight million? No, no, no. Right. And we are yes, not. Yes, not. Hold on. Right. You, you, are spoken. Spoken. you are spoken. And of course, do I need to have time. Don't do that. Deal with it. You've read um, the number of things. Let me, let me, let me first, let me first inform my viewers. For those of you, for those of you, for those of you, sorry, gentlemen, for those of you who are admiring the outfit, you see that this is not the first I'm wearing this type. If you are someone who likes to wear fugu smock, but you want it to be light and not, you know, as heavy and thick as you have in the usual fugu, this is for you. And uh, it is by Konati Clothing. You can locate them at Adenta Shopping Center, Adenta Down. The number to call is 0244-6767-32, 6767-32. Konati Clothing, what you wear counts. And they are giving you uh, 10 to 15 percent discount if you make an order between now and Father's Day. Yeah. So, I mean, oh. let, let, me, let me conclude this uh, conclude and again, again. They said the COVID-19 app, government paid money for it. Yes. I'm telling you on authority oh, okay. to pay. Yeah. Government has not paid a dime. Oh. The COVID anybody can Google it. Please, please. Government paid $1 nobody, million dollars for COVID-19 app. Nobody paid and Google it. Time for the Google COVID it. You see the stories. Let me place that on record. The Commonwealth finally, Foundation finally, report on, is clear. Finally, on this You matter. mean the money didn't come from government directly? Government it's public resource. Oh, That's what please. you mean. That's what government you mean. Government of Ghana has not paid a dime for the COVID-19 Ah, so please, but the COVID money came please, from IMF. Please, please, it came from AFDB. It came please. from the World Bank. So this was so, money from Commonwealth. Right. Uh, I'm let sorry, me, let me, I'm let me, sorry, but our, our time is up. Our time is up. Our time is up. Let me see. Let me make this final. Our time is up. This final. Our time is up. Let me make this final point on this SPV. SPV do not require any years of experience to come into existence. Thank you so very that much. Point, yeah. Ghana I guess, West. My guests have been Ghana West. Ghana West. Ghana West. Honorary Vice President, Money Africa. Sami Janfi, National Communications Officer, the National Democratic Congress, Silver Satete, is MP, Botiano English, Amanfro, and Deputy Minister for Information. I'm Samson Ladia Yenini. Thanks for your company. Have a good afternoon.